So what is the reservoir of infection? The reservoir of infection of an infectious agent is a habitat in which the agent normally lives and multiplies. So in this case, the major reservoir for influenza are animals and birds. So most of them were swine, horses, dogs, cats, domestic poultry birds. The source of infection is usually a case or a subclinical case. And during epidemics, you will have large number of mild and asymptomatic cases which play an important role in spread of the disease. The secretions of the respiratory uh, uh, respiratory secretions of the people are uh, cases are infected. The period of infectivity or the period of communicability is the virus is present in the nasal pharynx from one to two days before and one to two days after the onset of symptoms. So we can show the period of communicability is four to five days. The person can transmit from one person to other. Post factors influenza affect post ages. The highest mortality rate usually but is seen in certain high risk groups which are more than 65 years of age and children under 18 months and persons with diabetes, chronic heart disease, and kidney and respiratory elements. International travel helps in faster spread of the epidemic or the pandemic. Immunity to the influenza virus is subtype specific. Antibodies against HA and neuraminidase receptors are important to immunity infection. In fact, resistance to initiation of infection is related to the antibody against HA, which neutralizes the virus and decreases its activity. Antibodies will usually occur, will usually occur after seven days of the virus, seven days of the infection. So, if you want to find out if you have, if you are on third day. Or the second day and try one antibody test you will find it negative and it will give you false negative that patient can go into community and infect people so the first thing you should do is to do an antigen test during so something like an rt pcr will be useful will be very useful in uh, diagnosing so the antigen test is usually used during the early phase of disease when antibody tests are used is the Later pathogens. What are the environmental factors which uh, can affect the growth of this influenza virus? This is the seasonal incidence is striking epidemics, and you can see epidemics usually occur in the northern hemisphere in winter months, and in the southern hemisphere during during, uh, during the winter or the rainy season. Tropical countries, the virus will circulate throughout the year with one or two peaks during the rainy season. Overcrowding enhances the transmission of the virus, which occurs usually in India or in countries where there is overcrowding, the virus can transmit. So the negative part of the virus is because of the high humidity, the, the virus cannot sustain high humidity and can be cannot can lead to decrease in transmission of the virus. Yeah, uh, you can look at the incubation period for the various viruses which I have uh, mentioned here. This is a very important slide. So, shorter the incubation period, it will indicate that the actions are at the primary site of infection, produce the character symptoms of the disease. By longer incubation periods means that is there is invasion, there is invasion, there is tissue damage or there is an active replication or a wiring. Okay, so influenza virus which you can see are the common cold have shorter incubation periods. That means they are acting on the primary side of infection and producing the local signs and symptoms. Okay, so the mode of transmission are usually by droplet infection or droplet nuclear. You know what is droplet infection? Droplet nuclear are less than 5 micrometers so they are very they can hang over the ear for many times okay can be present in the ear they can be easily transmitted to a person thank god we do not have any uh, evidence that covid 19 is spread by droplet nuclear it is it is a much more uh, it is spread by droplets but within one to three feet that is why it is told to maintain social distancing for more than person or three feet or one meter distance. The virus will enter into the respiratory tract and cause inflammation and necrosis of the superficial epithelium that the tuck can conquer mucosa followed by the secondary bacterial infection. There is no viridium in influenza. 
the signs and symptoms as i told you will be very very limited to the upper respiratory tract there is sudden onset of fever and chills sore throat dry cough fatigue malaise terrible muscles headaches diarrhea and dizziness are common but what is uh, much more uh, distressing are is the myalgia that is the cause of absenteeism influenza is much is much more is the cause of absenteeism in uh, many of the our schools and colleges and you people always will have the advantage of always telling this that sir i have got a flu i have to sit at home complications of uh, influenza are very rare i think the most uh, most uh, complication which i can even understand is pneumonia not not more than anything that but other complications can also happen you know a case patient of pneumonia can present as very of oh, sorry of influenza can be very manifesting and present as aseptic meningitis we do not know new things and you know the complications which are reduces to administration of aspirin in children can present as febrile convulsions rea syndrome a cardiac can cause myocarditis pericarditis in respiratory it can lead to otitis media group less commonly sinusitis bronchitis pharyngeal epithelium in fact influenza virus will elose the epithelium and make it easy for the superficial bacteria to invade and cause the disease that is why most of the pneumonias bacterial pneumonias are caused after influenza pregnancy increases the chances there is increased maternal complications perinatal mortality and increased risk of prematurity and presently seen in covid is that in covid what is seen presently uh, pregnancy has a deleterious effect uh, on the on the health of the patient we have seen uh, we have at least recorded two deaths maternal deaths due to covid which has happened is the other in complex children yes study show a link between the development of wee syndrome and the use of aspirin for relieving figures caused by influenza virus the disease involves the cns and liver and exhibits symptoms of drowsiness uh, persistent vomiting and change in the personality is there a difference between the common cold and flu yes there is a difference but i don't know how to diagnose the difference between on clinical symptoms i don't know how to diagnose between a flu and a common cold the virus of common cold are different the flu is different that's the only thing virological you can until unless you take a sample or you cannot make out what is flu and what is influenza so here they have tried to make you know i think uh, very difficult to uh, differentiate what is a flu but still a few cold will be fever will be rare in a uh, cold when flu it will be much more headaches are sometimes in flu it is common cough is common in both of them running nose is common the body ache mild but it is more severe in flu nausea vomiting is rare in cold but more common in children fatigue is mild to moderate but severe in flu so the severity is subjective any person can present or not present the symptoms so that doesn't mean you go virology and start treating the patient with amantadine okay you have to treat the patient symptomatically okay flu patients or common cold patients will be at least 30% of your daily attendees if you do run a very good clinic <coughs> so so how will you diagnose of influenza you know if you are running a if you are a practitioner you don't need to diagnose influenza until and unless it is causing a pandemic okay you will be treating the patient symptomatically this is for academic purpose the virus isolation through nasopharyngeal nasopharyngeal swab so the virus can be detected by two things first is your indirect flows and antibody technique so the rt pcr or the egg inoculate the egg egg inoculation and to virus isolation and antigenic analysis second is by paired sera so the paired sera you collect two seras one is during the incubation period and then the zero convalescence and see there are rising rise in the antibodies so the need for two specimens increase the old four or greater rise in titer are considered diagnostic of the influence of the infection so these are the uh, institutes which uh, help in isolation of the influenza viruses are available so one of our in tamil nadu it is government attending pasture 
our bachelor's student uh, could know. There's Hafkin, which is uh, which I studied, it was very near to me. School of Tropical Medicine, Calcutta, All India Institute of Medical Science, and Vallabhbhai Patel Chest Institute. This is a very, very good. This is a very uh, important institute uh, for respiratory medicine. Armed Force Medical College, Pune, one of the skin institutions where there are facilities for isolation of influenza virus. So, to just go rapid, this one the test have you know increased sensitivity or specificity. So, these tests are just 70% accurate for determining the patient is infected with influenza virus and 90% accurate for determining the type of the pathogen. So, first to 70% positive, 90% for a type. So, there are a lot of tests in the market, you can go and see. I don't know why you could treat. It's better to stay at home, take symptomatic treatment, and get back to work. Are there antiviral agents which can be used for treatment? Yes, that there are drugs that are effective against antivirus, as lamantadine and lamantadine. Drugs that are effective against influenza viruses A, influenza virus B, so alzanamide, sanamavir, and ostilmavir. So ostilmavir is the one which we used, or the Tamiflu, which we used very well. Against con for control of H1N1 used, yeah, I have also taken Mosinavir uh, <clears throat> because I was in patients of H1N1 by the infection. This is hospital. So, uh, in amatidine, it will be in which is mostly given in influenza A and amatidine is similar to influenza A. Oral administration ages approved for treatment is one year from one, from one to 14 years for amatidine. Ages approved for prevention of flu is one year to one year. You can see that Ostromavir is not approved for prevention of prevention. Ostromavir you know, is the one which can be used for oral inhalation and for ages approved for treatment is more than 7 years and Ostromavir for more than 8 years. This is the dose which is given, I think it is, uh, we will be discussing about the dose when you come to the respective h one n one So, how do you prevent influenza? There are general preventive measures and specific preventive measures. Specific preventive measures will be vaccines which are killed and live attendant vaccines. General preventive measures will be a good ventilation of public buildings, avoidance of crowded places, surface to cover the faces with handkerchief and coughing and sneezing, following respiratory etiquette, stay at home as the first sign of influenza and prevent the spread. So, hashtag stay at home and your people are doing that. Indications of vaccination. So vaccination is not recommended to control the spread of the general population. Just imagine if there is a pandemic and you have 7.6 billion people, are you going to make 7.6 billion doses? And now how are you going to prioritize this 7.6 doses? Who are going to go to get? So vaccine is only recommended in certain selected populations. Industry, so there is absenteeism and two public servants who will be first responders. So somebody who is staying back in the ICU, who is working in the ICU, who is working with the casualty to so be the first person to receive the vaccine or police people or fire protection transport medical care people should get the vaccine first and then in the priority people with chronic debilitating disease metabolic disease like diabetes respiratory disorders congenital alcohol disease and close contacts of people living with them again to be effective, the vaccine must be administered at least two weeks before the onset of the epidemic, or preferably two or three months before you expect the influence epidemic. The killed vaccines, as you know, they are grown on chick embryo, they are live attenuated vaccines, is, uh, it is human deployed cell vaccine. Levitin influenza vaccine is administered intranasally. This is given intramuscularly. A killed vaccine is a single inoculation, which is given for 0.5 ml for adults and children over 3 years, and 0.25 ml for children for 6 months to 36 months. The protective value is 70 to 90 percent, and immunity lasts for 6 to 12 months. For levitin vaccines, also it is the same thing. My veterinary vaccine should not be given in immunosuppression patients because there is a risk they will get the disease. There is a risk that they will get because the because the immunity is not there and they will get infected by the virus. Yeah. Now what is the problem? What is the thing? So if I ask you, shall we do vaccination every year? Because it's only 70 to 90 percent. They are going to be effective 
and the immunity is only for 12 years 12 months or 12 months so is it an advisable to give vaccination every year every year is given because there is an antidote drift a point mutation so every whole companies have to start with uh, every year they have to start manufacturing a new new vaccine are we going to spend billions of dollars every year in in making a vaccine to a virus which is going to change every year mutating every year no the best thing will be to stay at home follow respiratory etiquette prevent source of transmission so uh, not only that the killed the killed vaccines have certain disadvantages there are people who can have allergy to the next there are risk of anaphylactic reaction that is so severe reaction to the vaccination people have developed colon bali syndrome basic for of getting the vaccine but so the, so the best thing you can do is you can prevent the flow you can avoid close contact stay at home when you're sick cover your mouth and nose clean your hands avoid touching your eyes nose or mouth practice other good healthy habits eat well develop your immunity okay so this was uh, in very very short uh, about uh, the influenza was in the introduction we'll be talking about avian influenza h5n1 virus this virus is usually is called as bird flu which is an endotic disease it is caused by the highly pathogenic avian influenza which occurs mainly in birds and is highly contagious among them but they can also spread to humans if humans are in close contact with poultry products but with rarely transmission between humans to humans so the h5n1 virus can be transmitted to close contact with poultry products to human but cannot be transmitted from human to human transmission human to human transmission is seen only in two cases till day of h5n1 the we'll be seeing that so something you should know about a timeline of the virus so the most things which virus comes up this is we have see we have for the last 20 years we have three epidemics or more than three two pandemics which have happened are relating to the influenza virus or the other viruses so this is going to happen again and again we do not know what is happening going to happen after we get over covid 19 There's a new virus, and I will tell you the H5N1. H5N1 virus is the one which is the most dreadful because it is there, it is going to, which is undergoing genetic mutation. This virus was first detected in 1996 in, in geese in China. Uh, the geese, which is the animal in China, H5N1 was detected in humans in 1997 during the poultry outbreak in Hong Kong, and has since been detected in poultry and wild birds in more than 50 countries. of asia africa europe and middle east the six countries were endemic for hpa1 h5n1 virus in poultry one of these is is our country india bangladesh china egypt asia indo and vietnam and this is a in this is not a good thing for us because it prevents the growth of our poultry industry it prevents the export of the poultry industry to european markets and us markets so the poultry so it will lead to banning of our poultry products from uh, to this countries loss of important foreign reserve so genetic analysis of h5n1 virus show that the influence of pandemics from genetic offspring can easily be far more lethal than the spanish flu so if you, if you remember that spanish flu has caused much more damage content to 200 million people have died so h5n1 has the potential to be much more lethal than spanish flu you just imagine that is why it is it is categorized as a category 5 pandemic index level which roughly speaking is any pandemic as bad as spanish flu since so whatever information we are having is before covid 19 has happened covid 19 has a mortality rate of at case fatality rate of 2.5 to 3 3 but if i i'll tell you if h5n1 breaks through the case fatality will be high much more higher than spanish flu or even 
कोविड नाइनटीन सो वी गॉट वन साइटेशन वेर इज प्रोबेबल पर्सन टू पर्सन ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ दी एवियन इन्फ्लुएंजा देर इज सम एविडेंस ऑफ लिमिटिंग ह्यूमन टू ह्यूमन ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ द वायरस और इस फैक्टर फॉर कॉन्ट्रेक्टिंग वायरस इज हैंडलिंग ऑफ दी Infected poultry, but the transmission of virus from infected birds has not been characterized as inefficient. 60% of the humans known to have infected with Asian strains have died from it. So those who have got infected, so you can tell that means 60% of the people who have died. That means the case fatality is 60%. And most importantly, H5N1 is going to mutate or raise dot in a strain which is much more capable. For efficient human-to-human -human transmission, this is just the two viruses which have, you know, coronavirus and this virus is H5N1. Coronavirus, why is coronavirus more dreadful? Because it's the second time, the third time, that coronavirus has jumped over from a species and caused infection to human. So, if you look at what has happened in SARS, coronavirus one, it jumped over. From bats or whatever the chicken poultry means to humans, that was the first symptom. Second, MERS CoV, which happened Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, jumped from cat from camels to human beings. And the third symptom is COVID-19, where it is supposedly been jumped from wild market uh, animals to humans. Okay. <laughs> So you always remember that H5N1, H5, H5N1 is waiting there to mutate to ray or sort, so it can be you know one of the most dreaded virus ever known to mankind. The symptoms which have been recorded is uh, fever, sore throat, muscle, conjunctivitis, and severe case breathing problems and pneumonia may be fatal. No new, no one knows that if these symptoms will be symptoms of a humanized H5N1. The severity of infection depends on a large part of states of the infected person's immune system, whether they are exposed to the strain before or they partially immunized. Yeah, uh, if I tell you that, uh, if I ask you that, which are the reservoirs of this infection? So H Y H Y N O is found in domestic poultry, in wild duck, in pigs, in infection in cats, in domestic dog in Thailand. A uh, wild or marrot, the mammal, tiger, even tigers and leopards are living in Thailand. So if you, uh, that means this is a strain which can cause multiple species. Uh, recently, COVID-19 was also one tiger in US also got infected with COVID-19. That is, it is rather if we if we have viruses like this which, which do not respect species barriers, they are going to be threat to us. So whatever preventive measures we take, and our economic development, we may have. We are we are at the mercy of nature. A virus comes and we all shut down, and all our economics, economic growth, are lost. So you can see that this is showing where the virus has confined. There's a sporadic cases of Asian H5 have occurred in people. So the countries which were reporting mostly cases were from China and the Southeast Asian countries. Looking at the cases, which are other than the three cases in Pakistan, with one that we didn't have cases here. In Bangladesh, six cases. In Northern Myanmar, one case. There is in Indonesia, the deaths were much more. 191, 191 cases, about 59 deaths. That, that's, that's a very big mortality case fatality for H5. There's one more report which says that probable limited person-to-person -person transmission of this highly pathogenic H5N1 influenza in China. So we have two cases documented: human-to-human -human transmission of close contacts. That means H5N1 can be transmitted in close contacts. What was the treatment modality used for H5N1? Ostensibly, was considered the drug of choice. Antibiotic to prevent community-acquired pneumonia. Oxygen therapy, invasive positive pressure inhibition was recommended for to prevent ARDS. Use lung protection, tidal volume, low dose systemic corticosteroids like hydrocortisone, 200 milligram per day in divided doses. NSAIDs, 
to give an oral suppository to prevent to treatment of antipyretic pyretic for fever and infection control whether it is called infection or also so all, all the infection prevention and control practices prevention and treatment of human influenza e viruses in people so the best prevention is to avoid the source of exposure as a general precaution people should avoid wide bulbs and observe them only from a distance that is the best thing in fact keeping animals in zoo is also a dangerous yeah it is dangerous i do not know why animals why animals should cross borders with humans in a privileged site within a human population and we go to see them every sunday with our children or our family seeing them is also very dangerous avoid contact with domestic birds poultry that appear to eat or die avoid contact with surfaces that appear to be contaminated with feces of wild or domestic birds so the whole problem with this virus is, is that because there is now a contact between the wild animals and humans much more closely we are going to get this virus infections